Where's Joe? Wait a minute, you look familiar to me. Could you possibly be Winnie the Pooh from the sequel, Blood and Honey? Cat, ah, I'm sorry I'm late, but thank you. I really needed a change. This is great. Where, where did you get it? <laughs> if you only knew. Hmm. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, Part 2, takes place right after Winnie the Pooh 1. Produced and directed by Sreese Freak Waterfield and Scott Chambers, who also plays Christopher. Debbie, let's get to this film. Are you ready? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. But before we give our scores, I want to say the reason we're doing it is because it was based on A.A. A. Milne's book mm -hmm. of famous Win Winnie the Pooh, Eeyore, Tigger, Piglet, all our beloved childhood characters, which now have gone into the public domain. Go so on. they're being corrupted in a way? I don't know about that. One, two, three. Wow! Wow! That's a first. And he has five with hockey pucks and a blue circle. No. I don't know what that is. It's a bear claw. It's a bear claw. Oh. Winnie the Pooh. Oh, God. Arr. Deep within A.A. A. Milne's Hundred Acre Wood, Winnie, Piglet, and Owl and Tigger take their rage to Christopher Robin's hometown of Ashton and wreak bloody havoc and revenge on the inhabitants. How dare. Oh, I dare you know, it was, it, the whole thing is British, British, so we have to talk, you do. Know. So what would you like to say to start about uh, Winnie the Pooh? This takes place right after Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey Part 1. Didn't see it. Came out a year ago. <laughs> Got terrible reviews. What else? But it was a kind of an interesting way of flipping a story around a childhood, wonderful memory, wonderful book into a slasher horror film. In Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey Part 1, yes. we leave off with murders that happen in the 100 acre wood. And everyone is believing that these mass murders occurred because. Christopher murdered all those people, but they're not sure. So Christopher comes back in two. He's a working doctor working through his residency and trying to become, you know, part of the society. But everyone's giving him dirty looks because they think that he is the actual killer, not this fictional made up Winnie the Pooh. So we lead him from there right into part two. And there's a key scene in the movie. In number one, everyone goes into the wood and gets slashed and torn and bloodied up. This time, Owl convinces Piglet and Winnie the Pooh to actually come out from the woods and into the town and commit their dastardly deeds and their slash and burn in the community. Sounds like a real heartfelt film. So they slash and burned their first cast list. Nobody appears no, again they from one to two. Except now Christopher is also the producer of the film. He's making kind of his acting debut. Couldn't find much about him uh, other than he's part of the, uh, the movie and he's a producer. Um, so he plays an interesting role. What did you think about his performance? <laughs> the funny thing is I thought, here I go with the thing falling. I'm going to get a sticker of Velcro for my kneecap. How does that yeah, sound? Yeah, I need that. He, from like the first five minutes, he was normal. And then the whole film, he had a face on where he was crying. He was crying. The whole thing. He had a face where he was crying. I thought it was kind of cute in a dorky way. I'm thinking to myself, well, you're going into this film as a producer and then the lead actor trying to save some money. But they made some big bucks in number one. They actually made five million worldwide out of a budget of almost 100,000. Right. And a film of this size, really, so this is not a huge major motion picture, but could generate millions of dollars just based on a kind of wacky concept. That well, horror is the number one seller in the business. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I can say about horror fans, because I run a horror festival, even the youngest horror fan will know horror from way back. There's things I can say about this that are good. <laughs> I really can. 
Um, and what first, would those be? Duh. All right. First of all, it's, a, shot, and so. it's an original idea. And this thing just came in public domain, just like uh, the Disney Mickey Mouse and all that stuff. So, I mean, I don't even want to, if anybody saw our little short, mm -hmm. they realize they're being created into lascivious films. Right. You can say that. And also horror films. It's a word, lascivious. Scrabble word. But it had a really good opening mm -hmm. before the main titles came on. It was filmed beautifully. Yes, I it was very credit. crisp and filmed gorgeously. If you saw one to two, you definitely saw a huge difference. It also had a fairy tale quality. Mm -hmm. And because it was an English film, they were very smart to use production design. So the, the houses were like cottages right. and the gardens looked like English gardens. Mm -hmm. So it had a fairy tale quality about it, okay. which modern horror is so stark sometimes and modern backdrops. And, you know, in a, in a horror film, if you have a great character, whether it's the, the Hundred Acre Woods or an old house, mm -hmm. That brings something to the film. And I think these kids were smart. I call them kids because they're probably like, I don't know, 40. <laughs> they could be my that. children. Yeah, they're younger than that. But they're younger than that. But We love our younger demographic folks. Yes, we do. We Especially from our foreign countries. Yeah. But here's the thing. They brought an element of sophistication that the Brits bring to cinema which the Americans don't have sometimes. American cinema, especially horror, is very frenetic. It's highly edited with okay. high-impact editing to cause excitement. And a lot of it doesn't cause excitement. If you have epilepsy, you're going to be like blah, 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 on the floor, right. you know? Yeah, aren't British made films kind of <laughs> slower in, in developing? They, they, they take time for the exposition. Right. And I don't know that they took time because there were, I think, three kills right before the opening oh, the title. Yeah, when they, when they kill the, the girls right. in that trailer. They're doing the Ouija right. board. And right. they, all of a sudden they flip over and they're dead. And of course, the proverbial chainsaw has to come out. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, what's a horror movie without a chainsaw these days? And they had quite a few kind of ties, innuendos to other horror films. Okay. Kind of interesting. Do, what, which ones? Tell me, please. Well, the, Educate me, darling. Well, the, the boy. Of course, you're, in every horror film, you have to be babysitting somehow. Um, Scott's love interest, Christopher's love interest. Uh -huh is babysitting and you have the kid running around with his freddy <laughs> outfit on and i'm like okay you got to have number one you got to have a babysitting scene yeah. where the monster appears and the kids all running around being rambunctious mm -hmm. um in the first opening scene as you mentioned who was the first kill the african-american woman yeah this is an african-american man who's right the first kill. They, they did the african-american woman i'm like mm -hmm. oh Big we knew she was going to get it because we were sitting next to each other and we both are like mumbling yeah. and saying right. she's, she's, gonna, she's, she's getting it. Yeah, and she's getting it. Then we get, OK, we did it. Yeah, yeah we figured yeah. it out. You know, we watch credits right till they roll. We don't get up in the middle and go out. We watch them. I saw Pine excuse, me, excuse me, excuse me. As long as I don't have to go to the bathroom. Well, then I have to tell you about it when you come back. OK. Yeah. It's like the old lady who can't hear and you go like, what did they say? <laughs> I got to go, well, Joe, uh, this is what happened. Thank but anyway, I noticed this. I don't know if anybody anybody else did, but it was Pinewood Studios, which is the oldest British film studio, which did Basil Rathbone and Sherlock Holmes and the great black and white horror movies, uh, Children of the Damned and, and stuff. And the Bond movies. To me, that was the interesting fact. It was more high, not highbrow, but of a higher caliber than I would think this screwball thing would be but they have all these movies i saw on tv the other day the trailer for bambi yes i saw that too and it was really odd i mean their concept of taking winnie the pooh and making it into a horror slasher film i think it's kind of genius because no one in their right mind would think of this yeah stuff it's like, very original it's concept and smart enough to say okay this is going to be up for you know for public domain real soon let's grab it let's run with the idea yeah um they filmed this movie in 10 days so you know the first one was was criticized for being kind of a low quality bad makeup kind of a crappy storyline did you see the first one i saw the first one concept great yeah but just poorly executed number two had the ability to make it more appealing um more laughs i mean i look at a horror movie in two different ways. Either I'm laughing my ass off because it's so silly, I or I'm did. scared shit that something's gonna bad, something bad's gonna happen when I leave the movie theater. This one went to the silly side. Tigger appears, excuse me, spoiler alert in number two. 
he appears and I'm like, yeah, Tigger. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm laughing my ass off. People are getting slashed. Or, you know, arms are getting pulled. People are getting spears through the head. Blood's going everywhere. It doesn't scare me. No. It just makes me laugh. So we gave it a low score. Yes. I mean, from one to 10, it's a half. But what did we think was ridiculous or we hated about the film? Let's go okay. into that stuff. I hated the film for these <laughs> reasons. Um, first of all, I think they got too campy. I was expecting something that would scare the bejesus out of me. Um, I always rate a horror film by how many times I jumped from my seat. I only jumped once. Once. So this was a one-seat And you jumper. almost jumped in my seat, but you were in my seat first. You said I was in your seat. You were, you were in my, in my seat. seat. No. I looked at the number. Uh, any of the characters that the monsters went, whether it was Owl, whether it was Winnie, um, got killed. Like, right. usually in a great horror movie, you know, the, the humans fighting back. They're throwing in a couple good shots. I mean, there was one scene where the officer, she's getting, she's ready to go. She, I mean, she, she's like, give it a shot. And I'm like, Come on, man. Let her get one in. Let her kick him in the couillons. You know, let him, let, let well, him go down Maybe you think once. that way because you're a man. I didn't see it that way, but really? maybe because you're a guy. You maybe think about punching and fighting. In the couillons. What I didn't like about this thing is at the end, they're all over the place. They don't have a car. They don't have the monsters. They don't know how to drive a car. Mm -hmm. And they go from the disco to this, to that, to Christopher Robin's house. They're, they're all over the, the place. The disco, Debbie, you're dating yourself. Well, was it was a rave. A nightclub? Well, I don't know about that. The rave scene reminded yeah. me of the movie Blade. And you know what it reminded me of? What? The start of the movie The Hunger with David Bowie and Catherine Deneuve. Great film. But in the Blade movie, Wesley Slipes is like, yeah. he's cutting people up. And they went to the rave and all of a sudden, they're there. Blood and guts, slashing happens. But then it's silhouetted by a curtain that's dividing the room, and you're not really seeing the blood and the, the horror. You're seeing just, and then all of a sudden they cut back to the scene where the monster comes in, and they're all laying on the ground like this. And I'm like, wait a minute. There should have been body parts all over right. the place. Like, they cheaped out on that that scene. And you know the girl with the, uh, the, the African-American mm -hmm. girl that kind of organized it and was the best friend? Mm -hmm. You knew she had to have the last kill, because that was like the face-off. Right. And she's still running around like crazy. We're going, she's got to get it. And she's going to get it. I love that scene because when Tigger's going after her, that yeah. was the one where Tigger was yeah. going after her, um, he yells out in his gnarly voice, come here, you fluorescent I just love that. I love when they give like these one-liners. Do they have to bleep you out? out? Are we allowed to say that word? I don't think so. Okay. All right. I'll try it again. Come here, you fluorescent itch. <laughs> you fill in the blank, folks. Now, they're going one step ahead, and they're creating a poo universe. Oh, God. Monsters we have to assemble. see them all? So here we go. Here's the laundry list of films that they're going to produce. Okay. Let's hear Bambi, it. Bambi, The Reckoning. The Reckoning. Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare. Oh, Christ. Pinocchio, unstrong. I told you they do Pinocchio. <laughs> and then Pooh Universe, if I'm, I'm saying that correctly. Pooh Universe, Monsters Assemble. Okay, so Debbie. Yeah. I want to play a little game with you. Yeah. This movie. You know, this movie conceptually has a great idea yes. behind it. Mm -hmm. It's really catchy. And I think if the writers and the producers of the next series of films doesn't get it right and doesn't make it happen, something's gonna happen. So I'm gonna be the amazing Karnak okay. from the old Johnny Carson shows. You're gonna be- Ed Rick McMahon. Man. I look like it probably here. So the amazing Joe summons his inner psychic abilities. Oh, cool you psychic abilities. Come in to me. The amazing Joe says, my prediction, Warner Brothers, Disney, Sony, mm, Paramount, and Universal. Warner Brothers, Disney, Sony, Paramount, Universal? Who will be the key suspects that screw over Jagged Edge Productions? Scott Chambers and Reese Frack Forderfield. Frack Forderfield? That's his name? Forderfield. It must be British. <laughs> Caption it below. We're not doing another day.
Number one, Tucker and Dale versus Evil from 2010. I actually have seen all these and I like these movies. So since I am a horror fan, I am, believe it or not. Another one is great one, tongue in cheek, The Cabin in the Woods from 2011. Mm. Terrifier. A lot of that, uh, people nowadays, everybody kind of knows if they're horror people, they know Terrifier. And that's from 2016. Sharknado. Oh. Oh, yeah. Don't make fun of it. It's a, it's a shark fest every year. The original is 2013, and I think it's Ian or Ian Zeering. I don't know. His name changes every time you hear him. 902. And Willie's Wonderland from 2021. Hmm. So those are my watch list. So, Debbie, we slashed and ripped apart and bloodied yeah. Read the Pooh Part 2. We gave it some credit, gave it some props, but... I guess we'll see in the future what happens next. Yeah. So anyway, join us next time on our show, The Real Watchlist Plus. Plus. And subscribe, like, Comments. tell your friends, whatever. Please do. We need you. We need you. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Watch and we'll see the, you next time. Yep. On the Bold Media Films YouTube channel.